Hi, I'm Marcia Neal, and in my many years of being a music educator, I have not seen such a great initiative as the one that has just come about through the passing of the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, just this past December. We're so excited about the fact that Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA, is actually allowing accountability to return to the states. And this is a good thing because as we know in the past, some of the federal legislation has required our students to achieve at specific levels as determined by the federal government. And now we have the opportunity to determine what those things should be at our level. With the passage of ESSA, that means that no child left behind will soon be gone, as are all of the provisions that go along with it. So with this in consideration, we will have a wonderful opportunity to make some determinations on our own on how we want our children to receive this well-rounded education. The first thing we want to share with you is that music is actually articulated as one of the well-rounded subjects within this new legislation. So this is the time for music educators to join with other advocates across the state and even in your local area to work with the decision makers to ensure that when the funding comes down for Title I, that music is included in the funding. So what this means for all of us is that our local states will have the ability to determine what it is that students should learn and be able to do. Some of the other people who will be having decision-making processes in this will be your local, your LEA, your local education association, that would be your school board. Your individual schools will also have some say in determining what kind of funding should be used on what kinds of programs at your local school. One other item is that this new law provides Title I funding to assist our schools that are of most needs. And of course, that would be for music education as well as other subject areas. For example, part of Title I funding can now be used for purchasing additional materials for your music program. It can be also used for expanding what you have in your local school program, which means additional staffing, uh, instruments, music, course opportunities, and even activities outside of the school day. So without going so deep into the weeds so that you don't even understand the legislation at all, we thought it just might be a good thing to provide several points of action that you can get on right away so that you can help your educators in your area move forward. You should realize that this is a relatively new act and there's not a lot of knowledge out there yet, so you will be first at the doorstep with a lot of valuable information. So what I would really like to do is share with you what we are calling the four R's. And the first one is to reach out. And the reason you want to reach out is because there are advocacy groups that are being formed all over the states. And you should reach out to your music education association in your state to find out if they already have a coalition that you could join because it's important that you come to the table and be a part of the decision making of where these Title I funds are going to go and how they're going to be used. So our second R is reinforce. And the point that you want to reinforce is that ESSA actually tells us what subjects are considered to be well-rounded. And of course, music is mentioned in ESSA as one of those subjects. Now, there are a number of other subjects which are included, which is why we as music educators and people in the music industry want to work together to ensure that we are at the table together. So our third R is to remind people of the value of music and what it really does for students. We know that it helps kids achieve at a higher level. They actually will graduate in higher numbers. They do better on their SATs, scores, and all those wonderful benefits. Now, the NAM Foundation has been a terrific organization to help us with all of these research points, and they are actually going to provide a document for you to use to, to give out to all of your clients, anyone who you see, policy decision makers, to help them realize the value of music and education. So we will provide a wonderful resource for you to reach out to NAM and get these materials and share with everyone who you know. The most important third R then is to remind. The fourth R is request. 
Be sure to request that all school and community leaders work through the local school district as they will be responsible for working with the state education departments. So we're very fortunate that NAFME has put together a variety of materials which are now posted on their Everything ESSA website. And one of these items that I think is of value is the ESSA toolkit. So what I would recommend to educators is first of all to become familiar with ESSA. Again, you can download the information from the NAFME site and read all about it. The second thing I would do is to meet with your arts team at your school and come up with ways in which you might want to expand the arts program and the music program in your building. And this could include additional staff, additional offerings, all kinds of elements that you could reach to more children. And that is the key and the focus. And then the third thing is to meet with your principal and present your plan and explain to your principal, these are the items that we would like to do in our school so that our program could be expanded to reach more children. So those three items are the ones that I would recommend. Get going on them right away. Join in the process. We're invested in your success. So we've created some documents that you can download right here now to help get you started.